I'll be right with you. I'm trying to make myself feel happier. Emotions have both cognitive and autonomic components. That is, they have um, your thoughts that help contribute to the emotion, and uh, you have arousal that contributes to the emotion. Now, it turns out many of these uh, features uh, tend to be consistent across culture. So, for example, there are common facial expressions such as joy, fear, disgust, anger, that you can observe across many different cultures, even cultures that have been separated from uh, the rest of the world for thousands of years. So this suggests that there's sort of a, a universal um, hardwired experience of emotion that we share. Additionally, we have special neurons uh, in our brains that fire when we watch someone do something and when we do it ourselves. So when I raise my hand, um, I can make analogous neurons in your brain start firing. And some of those neurons are the same neurons that would fire when you would raise your hand. So if you think about that, neurons firing in someone else's brain can cause analogous neurons to fire in your own brain. So these are called mirror neurons. And the activation of mirror neurons in the expression of emotion uh, could be the foundation for empathy. Right? Empathy is the ability to respond to and sense other people's emotions. Now this leads to an interesting hypothesis. Could it be that activating the motor neurons that are uh, associated with moving the muscles associated with certain facial expressions could that induce the emotion in yourself? Uh, in other words, does feedback from this autonomic activity, like movement of facial muscle, muscles, um, cue your body to then elicit emotions? So this is called the facial feedback hypothesis. Now this goes back uh, as far, at least as far as Charles Darwin uh, had ideas along these lines. Uh, but this was also suggested by William James uh, in the late 1800s. Now, a classic study uh, of the facial feedback hypothesis was done in 1988 by Strack, Martin, and Stepper. And what they did is they had uh, their participants, uh, they said, we're going to bring you in the lab and we're going to have you, uh, we're going to see how you do things without your hands. And so they gave them a pen, among other things. They had them hold a pen in their mouth. And they had them hold it one of two ways. One way is kind of with, I don't have a pen, so you'll have to bear with me. One way has the, the pen in the mouth this way, so that the muscles that are being used are actually the same muscles that would be involved in frowning. Now... The other condition is they might have them uh, hold them across their teeth. And in order to do that, you have to use the same muscles that are used in smiling. So the idea was uh, maybe this would induce a uh, positive or negative emotion in those participants. So in order to test that, afterwards they had them rate a cartoon to see how funny it was. Now, sure enough, individuals who rated the cartoon after having the pen in their teeth uh, and make in the smiling position rated the cartoon as funnier as the people who held it this way. Um, now, there was a 2016 paper where multiple labs uh, tried to replicate this study and failed to do so. But subsequent studies that followed up uh, on the differences between the original study and those studies um, found that actually both are correct. It seems to be that in the newer studies, they had told the participants that they were going to be videotaped. And something about the videotaping uh, is what made them uh, no longer show the effect. 
So why that is, I don't know, but it, it turns out that the original study uh, seems to hold up. Okay, important things to consider here. Feedback can refer to not just smiling, but all kinds of other uh, facial expressions. Similar results have been found for things like anger and for disgust, among others. Um, an interesting natural pool for testing facial feedback uh, is Botox patients. So Botox uh, is an injection that you get, and it, it's a toxin that uh, kills uh, the muscles and makes them unable to do their job. It kind of fixes them in place. And uh, researchers have taken individuals who are going in for Botox surgery, and uh, they, um, they measure their uh, ability to uh, sense, uh, to detect emotions in, say, pictures of other people. And they also detect uh, the overall levels of emotions in that person. They send them, they wait until they've done the Botox, and then they test them again two weeks later, and they see whether there's a difference. And it turns out that um, the people who've had Botox tend to have uh, worse ability to recognize emotions in others and worse ability to, or lower uh, feelings of emotionality in general. In fact, they've taken this uh, as a positive thing uh, and suggested that this might even be a good treatment for depression. Another interesting case is autistic spectrum disorders. Uh, autistic individuals are, seem to be unaffected by facial feedback. So they can hold this thing in their teeth all day long. It doesn't help their, um, their mood any. So because some people's brains work differently, um, it's kind of interesting that uh, they, uh, there's a difference here in the facial feedback hypothesis. Okay, so next time someone tells you to smile more, it's okay to hate them just a little bit especially if the goal is for to make them happier. However, it's worth a try to uh, work out those muscles and see if it works for you. All right, I'll see you next time. It's not working. <laughs>